Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a 2025 tour of my home lab. Um, I haven't really done a video like this in a while. I mean, I think the last time I did it was a couple months ago. Um, and I have changed a lot of stuff and gotten some new things. I, I've completely redone everything, essentially. So I thought I'd just make a video and go over it. Um, and I'll talk about future plans for the home lab. And yeah, so uh, starting at the top, I have my technical pro technical pro ps9 u uh power distribution bar this thing sucks um it is extremely dangerous don't get it this thing is rated for 20 amps and i am 100 percent sure of it it said it in the manual it said it in the amazon listing the fuse at the back of it it has a 20 amp fuse in it right it's rated for 20 amps however this freaking power cable right here is like i don't know if we can see that um I don't know if I could see the gauge on here. It's kind of dark. But anyways, this is super thin wire. If I were to guess, this is probably like freaking 14 gauge wire, stranded wire on a 20 amp power supply. So this wire is warm and I need to, I need to get a new one or just like put a new cord on it and make it all 20 amp stuff. Uh, so yeah, don't buy it. Don't buy from this company. Don't trust them. They suck. Second of all, I have a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I need to work on my camera skills, I'm shaky. Um, I have a Cisco 2901 router. This is my home router. Um, it is pretty cool. If you're going to get a Cisco ISR router, I would recommend getting a 2901. They're super quiet, they don't take a lot of power, and they're great to learn on, and they do gigabit ethernet, so that's pretty nice. Um, power cord looks a little bit janky, doesn't it? Okay. Um, so yeah, it's my home router. It's also my home phone system. Uh, got a number registered, a call centric. Goes through all my VXML code, all my custom stuff. Uh, next, I have a Cisco 3650 switch. This is my main switch for my home and my home lab. Um, I used to have a crappy little fast ethernet switch. This thing right here used to be my lab switch, but that's now been replaced to this because that one was fast ethernet and recently Starlink just got a lot better in my area. So my speeds are a lot better, or normally over 100 megabits per second now. So I ended up putting everything up on the gigabit switch, which I should have done a long time. Um, I have three dry VLANs configured on here, meaning like, I don't know if that's the correct terminology to use, but um, I just have VLANs separating the switch out into three different switches under one switch, if that makes sense. So from this port, to this port right here this is all my home network stuff and then from all from starting from here and ending here this is all my home lab stuff right and then this is all cisco meraki stuff and i'll get into that here in a little bit um so this is like my one and two network this is for my house my 10.0 network and then this is my uh, 10.131 network which is like cisco meraki um so yeah main switch works great love it best switches ever Next, I have my Dell PowerEdge R420 server. Um, these are really nice servers. I really like it. It's 1U, um, very quiet, and uh, it's just really nice. It, it has 88 gigs of RAM and four one terabyte hard disks in it. Um, just the regular spinning disks, not SSDs. Um, I will be upgrading it to however much RAM I can put in it. I need to look it up. I think it's like 128 gigs of RAM that can go into this particular model. Um, there's no point of me getting a better server with newer CPUs. This one works fine. I mean, I like it. Works great. So, anyway. Yeah, here's the uh, Dell server. Pretty nice. Next, I have a... Oh, let me just talk about what I'm running. So, this is my main web server. It's my DNS server. It uh, My database engine, I would, get, I would, I would say. Um, it runs everything. It's also my um, uh, virtual machine host. So, I run Hyper-V on this. Um, I could have been, I could be using ESXi, but in my situation, there was no need for it. I just, Hyper-V is plenty, and I, I really like Hyper-V. It's been great for me. Um, so I have like 16 Hyper-V virtual machines running on here for central station stuff, and um, uh, a Minecraft servers running on it where me and my friends play on, and it uh, works great. Um, and just some other things here and there, some Windows XP VMs and old, older OSs to experiment on. Next, I have a Cisco PIX 515E firewall. Um, this is for just like the firewall for my dial-up ISP. 
Um, next, I have a Cisco 2600 router. This is the router for the ISP, uh, for my dial-up ISP. And then I have a Cisco uh, 1760, I believe it is, router. This is what I'm using for like T1 distribution and T1 supply because I can put T1 cards in here. Um, next, I have a Cisco 2911 router, which is currently not being used. Um, it, this is where that my old fast Ethernet switch was, and it didn't look right having two U of empty spaces right here, so I just put the 2011 back in here. Um, this used to run my VXML server. Well, it used to be the VXML gateway, but once we get down to the blue wall, I'll show you. Next, I have a Cisco 29, uh, what is this, 2921 router. This is not doing absolutely anything. Um, it's literally doing nothing. It is on because, like, before I made this video, I was testing uh, Cisco router redundancy between these two routers. Um, so I could, like, turn these off if I wanted to. But um, next, I have a Cisco 2951 router. This is going to have uh, 76 phone lines on the back of it. I need to get a couple of voice over T1 PRI cards uh, so I can have a PRI link going to the 3945. We'll get into that in a second. This right here is a Cisco 2911 router. Uh, it is now my main VXML gateway. This replaced this. Um, I did that because gigabit internet, this is all fast ethernet, it's older stuff. This is still a great router though. Like if you don't, if you just want to do phone equipment, telephony stuff, you don't care about gigabit internet, get a 2011, they're great routers. Um, or a 2901, but you know. Um, so yeah, that's what, this is just a VXML gateway. There is a uh, T1 link coming from here to here. And then all my uh, VXML stuff gets ran on this gateway right here. This right here is my main router. This is also uh, this is my um, Cisco 3945 router. This is the router for my home lab, uh, or like my actual home, not my home network, but like my lab network. This is where all my computers, all this stuff, this is all off of this right here. Um, it is also my main voice, my 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 main phone system. Um, so what I'm saying, I'm going to take, this has 76 phone lines on it. I'm going to have a quad PRA link coming from here to this router, and it's going to have another 76 phone lines on it. Uh, so there's going to be like a hundred and something phone lines all together. Uh, so yeah, my 682 block is registered to this, which is, this is registered to my asterisk system. Um, this is my home phone system, not home phone system, but this is my lab phone system. It takes all, it takes care of all the phone lines for the receivers all the panel, the dial-up ISP. It's just like the main router, right? Next, the final two things I have are my Radionics D6500 security receivers. Um, I have a couple of videos about these that this one is broken right now, and this one uh, works fine. So this one's like a parts receiver for this one. But they're both in here because they just look really nice. Um, so, yeah, this is those are receivers, if you want more about those, then you can go watch a video of my, uh, on my YouTube channel. Next, let's get into the Cisco Meraki stuff, because I mentioned that um, this VLAN right here is for Cisco Meraki. Cisco Meraki, I've heard a lot of, like, my online friends, sorry about my camera quality, I'm, like, all over the place, but um, it's just whatever, I, I kind of suck at making videos. Um, Cisco Meraki is a kind of, I guess, say, controversial networking appliance type thing. A lot of my friends don't like it because it's licensed to heck. Their licenses are very expensive, which they are very expensive. And um, they're also all cloud-based, all cloud management. Um, and a lot of my friends don't like that it's all solely cloud-based, which I think is fine. Like, I'm, I'm starting to like a lot of the cloud more. I mean, I don't think... I think there's some issues with relying on it, or relying on the cloud to like store your entire internet. Like if for whatever reason Cisco Meraki went down, then you would lose internet at your house. I see that being an issue. But at the end of the day, I'm say, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, Cisco Meraki is not going to go down. They have like millions of customers. Like it's not going to go down, right? There might be some outages that might affect some people, but Cisco Meraki as a whole is probably not going to go down. I can't say that for sure, and you never know. But anyway, so. I have been starting to mess with Cisco Meraki a lot more. A friend of mine was very kind and put me on his Meraki system. 
Um, so here at my desk, excuse the cable hell, but I have a Cisco Meraki uh, Z-Box. I don't know the model, but it's an MX appliance right here, uh, a security appliance. And um, up here, I have a Cisco Meraki AP, and these APs look really nice. Like, I really like this AP. Um, so, he just shipped me that for testing out because I wanted to learn about it. And also uh, for the site-to-site -site VPN because I'm on this particular person's phone system, CUCN phone system, registered onto my Polycom phone. And the only way to access his phone system is to have that site-to-site -site VPN into his network. Um, so the Meraki box does that. Um, but other than that, I really have it to learn on. So this VLAN's for any of that, any of the Meraki stuff. So this is on its own IP. But anyways, so for future updates, I plan on, I'm going to get so much hate for saying this, but I plan on making my home network run off of Cisco Meraki and I was thinking Ubiquity too, like it would be cool to have Ubiquity. I don't like Ubiquity, okay? I mean, that's just me. I know a lot of people like it. I know it has some great features. It's cool how nothing is licensed. They don't have any licensing. That's all really cool. I just think they're not good for enterprise solutions. And that's just my opinion. You know, people might prove me wrong, go ahead. But my opinion stands. I don't like, I don't like Unify for enterprise. I mean, you don't need a switch to light up RGB in your freaking data center, right? Um, I think Cisco belongs more in the data center world type thing. And then, Mur and not Morocco, I'm sorry, Unify logs into like the small local business that can't afford Cisco Meraki or just doesn't want to do Cisco or home lab stuff. It's really good for home lab stuff. Um, so I'm not crapping it on, on it in a home lab environment because it can do a lot. I just personally don't like it. Um, I'm using Meraki because I have access to it. And so I'm going to use it because I have access to it. It's, it's really nice. I like the interface. I like how it's all cloud managed. It's really cool. I just plug in the device. It pulls its configuration from the cloud. I love every bit about it. And um, you never know until you try it. I've personally messed with Ubiquity. I'm not a fan of it, like I said, but I have heard a lot of good things about it. I've also heard a lot of bad things about it. So, um, uh, yeah, I plan on replacing the uh, 2901 here with a Cisco Meraki MX100 firewall or security appliance, as they call it, or MX250, whatever I can get my hands on. And this switch will end up being replaced with a uh, Cisco Meraki switch as well. Um, just because I'm, I want to explore new things, and I think Meraki is, like I said, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, as far as all my home lab stuff, this is all staying like Cisco ISR. Like I, like, I like this way more than I like Meraki. There's something about CLI and configuring CLI and just like knowing the commands to type in. I think if you're an IT administrator, you need to know how to configure a Cisco router. You don't need to waste your life away at a UI, right? Like, you need to, you need to know how to configure a Cisco router if you're working in IT. Um, but freaking love the ISRs. I'm not saying I don't like them. I just want to explore something new. Plus, my current home network runs off these, excuse my mess, guys, but my current home network runs off these Cisco 2702i APs, and they're great for the bandwidth. Like, I get, my speeds are pretty nice. I, I'm happy. I mean, I don't get the best speeds because Starlink's my ISP, but they do good. The only thing that suck about those APs is the range. The range on those suck, and they're all at high power. I can't walk out my front door and have internet it, it's ridiculous and it's disappointing people will say oh well it's because you have your ap sitting up i have one in my living room now mounted on the ceiling properly right um and you know the range still sucks and it's set at high power mode and it's just an overall disappointment this meraki ap right here is crazy powerful like i can i have a pretty big house so i can my brother right now is connected to that meraki ap on my Minecraft server right now, across the other side of the house, into his bedroom, through like four different walls, and he's getting 100 megabits per second download speed, um, which is pretty good. Like before, if I were to run the whole house off that one AP up there, you wouldn't get internet past this wall of my room. So that's why I'm gonna switch to Meraki, and if it ends up screwing me over and something ends up happening, I'll just put this catalyst switch back in, and flip over a wire, take the Ethernet cable out of the Meraki, and put it back into the 2901, and that will be it. And then everyone could say, oh, 
I was right, you were wrong. Whatever, right? But at the end of the day, I'm going to give it a try. I think it would be really cool. No one else has a Meraki system in their house. So, um, or maybe you do. But anyways, so that's what is going to happen. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any uh, comments or questions or concerns or whatever the frick, just leave a question. I like answering comments. I like talking to people. So, uh, yeah, just leave me a comment or uh, check out my website. You can email me or friend me on Discord or whatever the heck. So, yeah. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.